So I made a TikTok that went mega viral, and I mean, in my opinion, uh, on my tech salary progression, going from 2014, fifteen dollars an hour, to now 2022, so eight years there, um, making one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars base salary. I didn't talk about stocks, total compensation, anything, because I feel like when people start to talk about that, it can get very confusing. Um, so yeah, I spoke about base salary and whatnot. And a lot of people had a lot of questions and a lot of people asked how I made that jump from help desk, which was $16 an hour. So about $30,000 a year to junior sys admin, which was my first salary job at $55,000 a year, which was for me a significant jump and a significant amount of money. So in today's video, we're going to talk about, to me, it's four skills. It's learning a ticketing system, documentation, learning PowerShell or a scripting language and getting a cloud certification. Um, so I'm going to address all of that in this video. With all that being said, hi, I'm GPS. I like making cloud computing videos and videos on career and just things that I've picked up along the way. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help. And it helps me to keep, you know, creating free content and whatnot. And welcome to a new video. Alrighty, so like I mentioned, my help desk gig, I was able to land without a college degree and without any certification. So no A+, which is a typical like help desk certification that people get. I had one and a half year, 16 months to be exact, of experience and at a retail store, at an Apple store. To be fair, the role there was a technical role because I was sort of helping people with iPhones and iOS problems and Mac OS problems and whatnot. And we did use a ticketing system. So the whole troubleshooting mindset, the whole documenting issues and whatnot, I learned thanks to that gig. And I also do very well at interviewing, so I'll do another video on that too. So with that experience plus my interviewing skills, I landed my help desk gig, but no other, no educational background or whatnot. The help desk gig started at, I believe, $16 an hour. So the entire time that I was there, I was probably making somewhere around 30 to maybe like $32,000 a year. And there was no uh, stocks or bonuses or anything like that. I didn't really encounter that until I joined Microsoft, which was, is my latest job. But the, the, the jump from $30,000 a year to $55,000 a year was significant and significant money for me too. And there was four things that I did to land the junior sys admin role. So the first one was learning a ticketing system that is used at many, many companies. Uh, there's a bunch of them, but the one that I knew specifically was Jira. So I knew not only how to use queues in Jira, how to create tickets in Jira, how to, you know, um, add documentation to Jira. But I, towards the end of my help desk career, I also got insight on how to like create your own workflows in Jira and a bunch of other things on like how Jira actually works. So that was definitely a plus going into my junior sys admin gig because that place was using Jira as well. And they were going to need help creating workflows and things like that. So my help desk gig, uh, plus one on that also along the lines of using a ticketing system was creating documentation on absolutely everything that I could. So any problem that I was able to address and fix and resolve or even not resolve at my help desk gig, we were supposed to create documentation on it. That way, if someone else encountered the issue, they could just use the documentation that you created and save a lot of time, right? Because help desk is all about figuring out issues as many as you can and as fast as you can. It's not really in-depth engineering. Um, it's more so just volume kind of thing, which also teaches you how to work under pressure and deadlines and whatnot. And for me, it was a fun challenge because it was, it used to be like, oh, if I can take sort of four issues an hour, can I challenge myself to get to five in a couple of months? Can I challenge myself to get to six in a couple of months and whatnot? So yeah, creating documentation and creating documentation that was easy to share so all the people could easily read the documentation. There was there was uh, documentation on what the issue was, what I did that didn't work, and what the, I did that did work. All these kinds of things, including them, uh, was great. So that was the second thing. The third thing was having a, which, which getting a, uh, what, what was it? Oh, a certification, cloud certification. So for me, it was the AWS Certified Developer Associate Certification. I got this question as well the other day about, oh, should I go for the Solution Architect Associate or the Developer Arch uh, Developer Associate? I personally find the Solution Architect Certification boring, and it just feels very like theoretical to me, where the Developer one was a lot more hands-on in my opinion, and I had a lot more fun studying for it. I studied for both, but I only sat for the Developer one, and I passed that one. 
but there's a lot of overlap between the content for both of them. But I learned a lot and I learned what I needed for my junior sys admin gig from the developer one. But I also took my sweet time. I took like six months to study for my certification. And that these days is unheard of. Like you'll go on LinkedIn and you'll see people who pass certifications every week, every month. And then you can tell that that's just not a real way to soak in knowledge that will impact your career for long term. Like you really have to take your time. I'm not saying you have to take six months. It could be less, but don't just sit for certifications by memorizing because you're not really going to get out of them. And they're not cheap, right? If we think of most cloud certs are at least $100 plus, right? Some of the like uh, CompTIA ones are like $300, $400, right? But anyway, that certification helped for my junior sys admin gig because that gig in the job description, they were asking for, oh, well, you might, if you're interested in cloud, then you'll have plenty of projects to work on because we're migrating. So on my resume, I had my certification. And then during the initial phone call, uh, the hiring manager asked me like, oh yeah, I see that you have the certification. Are you interested in cloud? And because I had recently passed that and then I knew everything about the certification, I like talked a lot about it uh, and a lot about cloud computing in general saying like, yeah, I'm very interested in that. So that was another thing that made a huge impact into landing the role. And the fourth thing was knowing a scripting language. So in my case, it was PowerShell. Now, do I recommend PowerShell? If you're working somewhere that you can get exposure to PowerShell, by all means, go for it. But you're, if you're at a job that you can't get any exposure to any kind of scripting language and you're learning on the side, I would recommend to go with Bash just because Bash is used for Linux machines and Linux servers uh, tend to be more used than Windows servers. So it's more so kind of like getting what your best bang for your buck in terms of what you're studying for. So go for Bash. But I didn't get too much experience with PowerShell. Um, it was more so like my own kind of uh, scripts. It was more so working with scripts that other people have written or seeing other people create scripts and kind of them taking time with them for them to explain things to me. But I knew how to execute scripts. I knew sort of being able to open up the script and see like what it, like I could piece it apart. I could like Google things like, oh, what does this command specifically do? And I could understand what was going on. And that made an impact into landing my junior sys admin gig because sys, sys admin roles are all about automating things uh you can think about like especially like let's let's say like a windows shop which was the sysadmin gig that i got they use windows and azure like automating 365 things automating active directory things automating things on virtual machines all of that could be done with powershell so having that knowledge and that experience even if it was a little bit uh, it was enough because again, the sysadmin gig was a junior, sort of like mid-level uh, or I guess entry level because uh, sysadmin roles typically are sort of mid-level you know, kind of roles that you get after support, uh, but before you can get into like full like, engineering and whatnot. Um, not saying that you can't land your first role as a sysadmin. It was just for me, it was more so like a mid-level kind of thing. Um, yeah, but uh, the hiring manager was more like, as long as you're aware and you've worked with these tools before, I don't need you to have extensive experience with this because I understand this is still like an entry-level, mid-level role. But those were the four things that really made an impact for me. And again, I really recommend you know how to take tickets, know how to document your issues, get some sort of certification that will help you go towards the role that you want to get to. In my case, it was the AWS Certified Developer Associate. And then learn a scripting language. If you can get exposure to a language at your role, whatever language that is, do it. Um, and if you can't learn bash. All right. That's pretty much it. I'm going to have a bunch of other videos following up about how I did what I did to go from junior sysadmin to cloud engineer, uh, and then cloud engineer to training architect and then training architect to now my gig cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And I do also want to talk a little bit about, um, base salary and total compensation because there was a lot of questions around that as well. I can talk a little bit more about certifications, education, whatnot, things like that. If you have any more questions, leave them in the chat and I will do my absolute best to, well, in the comments, I will do my absolute best to answer them. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.